This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and consider this a sort of five minutes on tech for difficult times. You're stuck at home, working at home, I guess if you're lucky, and you've discovered that that big monitor you were used to at work, well, your little 13-inch laptop isn't cutting it so much, and you don't want to go into the whole desktop experience, mouse, keyboard, big monitor, all that sort of thing. So you're thinking about a bigger laptop. So we're going to look at 17-inch laptops together. Uh, just one from each category. Well, one would be the Mac, if for those of you who prefer the Mac, and then we're going to have gaming laptop we're gonna have a super light one and then a budget one so starting with this one right here the LG Gram 17 this is the latest 2020 model with Intel 10th generation CPUs inside this doesn't feel at all like a 17 inch laptop it is insanely light it's a better than average display too it's 2560 by 1600 IPS so that's a good resolution there. Not touchscreen, though. Backlit keyboard, everything that you would expect. Uh, relatively speaking, fairly upgradable internals for an Ultrabook, even a big one. So if you're looking for that big screen experience, so your webcast meeting is only taking up a little corner while you're doing some other things that maybe are even more fun, who knows? Well, this is your choice for premium, super crazy light. And yeah, it's named Gram because it's around 2.2 kilograms. You get the idea other light. Next up, it's the 16-inch MacBook Pro for your content creator types and those of you who prefer Mac OS. And yes, it's not a 17-inch, but this is the biggest laptop that Apple makes, so we're squeezing it in here. Intel Core i7 and Core i9 9th generation processors, quite powerful that. And the graphics are finally getting to where we'd like to see them. I have the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M on this one, and that holds its own competing with something like the Dell XPS 15 and other thin and light mobile workstation oriented laptop. So for those of you who are doing a lot of content creation where color accuracy matters, a high resolution retina display, really great performance in Final Cut, pretty decent in Premiere Pro these days for that sort of stuff. Or if you're doing coding, say um, big iOS programs particularly because coding for iOS is just nice on a Mac. Uh, you know, you don't need this much horsepower if you're doing small and light programs, but you know, those of you who are doing more mm, stuff. Web development too, because you've got a really nice screen here, so you can do your visual assets on this as well as your web coding, all that sort of thing. Starts around $2,400, though it's not cheap, that's for sure. Next is gaming laptops. This is the MSI Raider, the GE75, because it's the 17-inch model, and this one is it's the the best compromise actually for a gaming laptop. It looks pretty adult looking. It doesn't have, you know, glitzy stuff going on, but it's relatively speaking fairly thin and light, but not so thin and light that you have thermal constraints and problems with heat in general, and not so thin that it has to have NVIDIA Max-Q graphics. This has full NVIDIA RTX 2070 and 2080 graphics inside, so that makes it super powerful. So who is this for? Well, Obviously, for those of you who are looking to keep it a little visually chill, but you want to do some gaming too. And not just that. Say you're not a Mac person, but you want to do content creation, be it 4K video editing, or you're doing scientific analysis, blender renders, all of that sort of stuff. You need more horsepower than Ultrabook offers. So a lot of people do look to gaming laptops for that. So again, this one is a good size compromise and a looks compromise. If you're on a tighter budget, because this one is going for about $2,000 at Costco right now with an RTX 2070. If that's too much, money for you. MSI has a lot of different laptops. They also have the Leopard series, which is the GP75, and that's about $1,500. That does do Max-Q graphics instead, RTX 2070 Max-Q, Intel 10th generation CPUs, though. It's still wildly performant. It's going to play any game great, and certainly for content creation, yeah. And for those of you who really do want the gamery look bling, there is something like the Alienware. So this is the M15. It's also available in the M17, and basically the same thing, only a different size. Uh, you got the out there look, so that's what you're digging there, or if you're still into the Alienware branding, you get the idea. Other chill brands, but more boutique and expensive, would be something like the Razer Blade 17 Pro, which is a lovely laptop, just also very expensive. So it depends if you're looking to spend like around three grand or something, it's there for you. And then there's the Asus Rogue Zephyrus line, which has the forward shifted keyboard and weirdo trackpad, but very classy looking laptop. Again, Max-Q graphics on that one though. Lastly, I don't have it in hand to show you, but we've reviewed the Dell Inspiron 17 before, and we recently reviewed the 15. So the 3000 line, this is for the more affordable laptop that you're looking at, that still offers really good value and nice, solid build quality. I really have always liked the Inspirons for those of you who are looking to spend less money. So the 3000 series starts at around $550. 
with a hard drive and around $700 if you want it with a 512 gig SSD. You get a full HD display on that, a nice robust build, but it's not too thick, it's not too heavy. A fairly comfortable keyboard on that, and for that price you get that big 17 inch screen. The Inspiron is not a slouch in the performance department. Intel 10th generation Ultrabook CPUs with Intel Iris Plus graphics. So this is an Ultrabook class laptop, folks, not a more oomphy mobile workstation, but you can guess that from the price. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and do hit the notification bell, too.